Good morning, eighth graders. Today we're gonna to talk about chapter seven, section three, so in Mexico today. This is your last section in the chapter of Mexico. This is also going to be my first time um, using Ed Puzzle, and so we'll see how it goes. If something doesn't work, please let me know, all right? I have a feeling our one will email me if something doesn't quite um, work the way that it should. So you can open your book to page 178, but again, you don't need your notes because they will be built into this lesson. All right, so the first thing that we are going to talk about is Mexico and when it comes to their economy and their government. So just like Canada, the United States, and now Mexico, we are all a form of a democracy, meaning that the people are able to vote. And there's different political parties and people that they can vote for, all right? So for Mexico, this has been a change from decades ago, all right? So today, people in Mexico can vote for, um, you know, um, excuse me, for elections for the first time that's going to make their economy better and that's going to make their economy stronger, okay? People can find more jobs, more stable jobs um, in Mexico. That's going to help the people that live there, that's going to help the economy, and that's going to help the government. More children are attending school and that's just good all around. Um, on the CIA World Factbook, I think you looked up their literacy rate, okay? So that has been going up as we continue to have more kids attend school, all right? So again, in recent years, changes in Mexico's government and economy has made improvements, all right? So is Mexico a developing country? Yes. All right, now they are working on becoming a developed country and in some areas they could be considered, you know, make, or meeting the areas of development, but there's this long checklist, all right, of qualifications that you need to meet in order to be a developed country and they're just not there in all these areas, but they're working on it. All right, so again, Mexico has a democratic government, um, but just like we talked about Canada, okay, their democratic government didn't quite look like our democratic government, and the same is going to go for Mexico. All right, so <laughs> we're going to talk about political parties. So we know in the United States the two main political parties are going to be the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. There are a couple of other ones and you'll start to see those when you start to vote or an independent party, but they're just not as popular as our Republican and Democratic parties, all right? Okay, so for 71 years, 71 years, Mexico had the same political party, you know, in charge. So that's saying that for 71 years, you know, the United States had like, let's say a Republican president, or for 71 years, the United States had a Democratic, um, uh, excuse me, a president, all right? That, that's a long time, all right? That's a long time. All right, so that party for 71 years was called the PRI, the Institutional Revolutionary Party, all right? And when you learn Spanish, it's going to be backwards, so P-R-I, all right? So this is going to end in the year 2000. So in 2000, Mexicans elected Vincent Fox, all right, and he was part of the PAN, the National Action Party, so P-A-N. So Vincent Fox is the one who ended this 71 year long, you know, political party being the same. Today, 
Andres Menya Lopez is their president, okay? Now, he's part of a separate political party. Um, he is part of the M-O-R-E-N, A, Morano Party, National um, Regeneration Movement. Okay, so again, Mexico is developing and you should have identified that on your passport. And again, struggling with a lot of debt that they have um, from foreign countries, all right? Their unemployment rate had been high, but if you noticed by your passport, they have a lower unemployment rate right now than the United States does. All right, and then something called inflation. All right, Mexico is the economy, it is growing, and the living standards in Mexico are lower, all right, than in many other countries. All right, it is hard to compare Mexico to the United States and Mexico to Canada, but as we tend to move south into some of these other countries, Mexico is a lot more stable than some of these other countries. All right, so what we talked about with the trading between Canada, the United States, and Mexico, all right? In your book, it's called NAFTA the North Atlantic Free Trade Agreement. This has changed to the USMCA. This was the question that was on Kahoot for Canada, all right? So Mexico, the United States, and Canada, we have this open border agreement when it comes to trading, all right? We're three separate countries all within one continent. Okay, we're all in North America. And so when you think of exporting, all right, it saves a lot of money to be able to export and ship to countries that you are close to, all right? So USMCA, all right? All right, Mexico's agriculture industry have increased because of the USMCA and its agriculture, industry, and services that really make up most of Mexico's economy. And again, that's something that you found on your passport. All right, so agriculture is a huge part of Mexico's economy, all right? 13% of their land is able to be farmed, all right, which I do believe is more than what the United States has. So it does sound low, all right, but that is a pretty good percentage of land that's good for farming, all right. Slash and burn is a type of practice that is going on in Mexico. Uh, pros and cons to that, okay? Um, more farmland can mean more exporting, uh, more goods and more food, and it can mean more jobs. The cons to that, though, is slashing, burning, tearing down, and destroying forest, all right? So slash and burn, especially as we start to head down to the rainforest, in the jungle area, it's um, we need to stop, okay, because we're damaging and ruining so much land that is also good for our environment. All right, um, the high demand for food again in the United States encouraged many farmers in Mexico to start growing cash crops, okay, citrus fruit, and of course, avocados are very key to what's being grown in Mexico and sold within the United States. And it is causing some other issues along with that as well. So these are just some pictures for slash and burn. All right, oil, oil is next. Petroleum is what we called it in section one, which most of it again is coming from the Gulf and it is being exported to the United States. Um, mining and the 
then again, manufacturing industries are also very common for Mexico's economy. So the fastest growing industrial centers in Mexico are going to be north, all right? They are right next to the United States border. And if you think about that, that's pretty smart because when it comes to shipping, all right, and to exporting, and most of the stuff is getting exported and shipped to the United States, building it right on the Mexican-United States border makes sense. All right, so um, Mexican workers in these factories assemble goods for exporting to the United States and other countries as well. And there are um, many Mexican workers who do tend to cross the border and then they work within the United States. Though I think that has drastically changed in the last few years. Okay, the other important aspect of Mexico's economy, of course, is tourism. All right, um, many tourists like to visit the old colonial sites the Maya and Aztec monuments, which again, we'll be working on um, this week, and then the coastal resorts as well. And I personally would like to go to all of them. Okay, so we are going to take Mexico and we are going to divide it into four regions. All right, four regions. We're going to talk about greater Mexico City, Central Mexico, Northern Mexico, and then Southern Mexico. All right, Greater Mexico City is where I'm going to find the capital of Mexico, which is Mexico City. All right, and about 50 other smaller cities near it. So Mexico City, in your book, it's going to say that it's the second largest city in the world. That is incorrect. All right, it is now the fifth largest. All right. Um, and again, very densely populated. So the number of people per square mile. All right, this region does of course have a lot of jobs. It does have a lot of educational opportunities with schools and universities. And it's, a, its population though can cause issues. So we talked about how Mexican City is within that greater Mexico area and it's on that plateau in between the mountains. All right, well, when you have tons of pollution, okay, from factories and from all the cars and so forth, okay, pollution then rises. Well, when pollution rises in an area with mountains, it's like the mountains kind of encave it and they like make it stay there, all right? So then what's going to happen is something called smog, all right, like fog. So it does look foggy, but it's pollution, all right? And so the smog levels, when they're high, that's not good air quality and that's not healthy, okay? So a lot of pollution, smog, which then leads to health problems, and there also is a lot of poverty within these bigger cities. That is not common to Mexico. We see that in the United States. We're going to see that as we travel to all these different countries and regions because the bigger cities are going to have the more job opportunities. And if you need to find a job and you're looking for a job, you want to be closer within the city if you could get there, but maybe you can't afford a home yet. Okay, next we're going to talk about Mexico's central area, all right? So many of these cities are going to be established as mining or ranching centers during that colonial time period that we talked about in section two. So when you visit some of these cities from their architecture and stuff and some of their buildings that are still there, they have that colonial style to them. Central Mexico has many valleys and small family farms here um, because of the great soil that they do have. And it has attracted industries from overcrowded Mexico City and it is starting to grow more. All right, so these cities have grown in size as well. 
northern Mexico, so right on the border between the United States and Mexico, all right, this is going to be the richest and most modern area. This is where tons of those factories are. And then again, being so close to the United States, a lot of what's happening in the United States, all right, is very common in northern Mexico as well, all right? Um, so, like a lot of the TV shows that are popular in the United States are going to be popular here in the northern part of Mexico, music and entertainment. Um, again, I think in some of the classes we talked about how crossing the border um, was very, very common. Um, like I was able to cross it a couple of times when I was in Southern California to spend the day in Mexico and then come on back. Again, that has changed over the years. It's a lot more strict, um, but who knows uh, where we're going with that in the whole open border. We don't want to totally close off any borders, all right? Um, but then again, with COVID and everything, things are just kind of crazy right now, all right? So again, northern Mexico, you have to remember too from your climate map, very dry, desert-like. All right, now there's southern Mexico. So we're leaving that dry area, going into that warm, humid, tropical area closer to that equator. So this is going to be the least populated um, and least industrial um, part of Mexico. A lot of the native languages that you found um, on the CIA World Factbook, many of these languages are spoken in the southern part of Mexico. All right, so many people in this region speak Indian languages and practice that traditional way of life. Southern Mexico is vital to the country's economy, sugarcane, and coffee grow in this region. Now, as we get closer to this equator, we are going to see sugarcane and coffee again and again and again because of the perfect type of climate. And I love sugar and I love coffee and I love them together. All right, oil again is going to be produced within the Gulf region, which again is south, all right? And the Yucatan Peninsula and the Mayan rooms have also attracted a lot of visitors. Though again, keep in mind, they were just hit by um, some really bad weather lately. So this is um, sugarcane shoots. This is a coffee bean, which we'll watch how that is processed, and the rooms. And that is it. Let me know how this goes, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.